Prince Andrew recently received a meaningful show of support from the Queen and Prince Philip at Balmoral, but Her Majesty and the Duke of Edinburgh felt obliged to read him the Riot Act after an episode in 1984, according to unearthed reports. Prince Andrew has been spotted leaving Balmoral this week, following ex-wife Sarah Ferguson's hasty departure from the Queen's summer retreat. Prince Philip's early arrival to the Scottish estate, coming alongside the Queen appearing by Andrew's side as the two rode to church on Sunday, has been widely interpreted as a show of support and unity following the death of Jeffrey Epstein. However, an episode from 1984 illustrates one of the very few times the Queen and Duke of Edinburgh have lost their temper with their second son. Journalist Sue Arnold, writing in Vanity Fair in 1986, describes the time the Queen and the furious Duke of Edinburgh finally read the riot act to their second-born son. Ms. Arnold writes, Andrew's romantic escapades, together with some much-publicized midshipman japs, he has a penchant for practical jokes, earned him the reputation of royal lout about town, a label that saddened his mother and annoyed his father. Secretly, however, Prince Philip admires Andrew's macho action man image, it reminds him of his own youth. She continues, it was only after the famous paint spraying episode on an official visit to California, when Andrew doused a row of photographers with white paint, that his parents finally read the riot act. The New York Times reported at the time, wiping his hands on a piece of newspaper afterward, Andrew said, I enjoyed that. However, Ms. Arnold continues, the Duke of Edinburgh put in a furious transatlantic telephone call advising his second son to pull his finger out and grow up. He was effectively confined to barracks and spent a chastened summer holiday cruising with his parents on the royal yacht off the Scottish coast. Andrew was also caught up in a major row during his day's training at the prestigious Dartmouth Naval College, when he and other students caused mayhem during a charity race. However, his youthful japs were not the last time the Queen read the riot act to her second son. Channel 5's Paxman on the Queen's Children, which originally aired in February, describes how, by Christmas 1995, the Queen had had enough of the oft-publicized turmoil in both her eldest son's marriages. Jeremy Paxman explains, Her Majesty had a plan to take back control from her wayward children. Mr. Paxman speaks to veteran royal reporter Phil Dampier, who broke the news of the Queen issuing an ultimatum to her eldest sons. Mr. Dampier says, the Queen had summoned her children to what you can only describe as a summit, at Sandringham. The monarchy itself was in peril, it was at such a low ebb. It was in such a terrible state that they had to do something. That was the turning point when the Queen said, enough is enough, you must now divorce. We have to draw a line under this. Someone overheard the conversation, they discussed the fact that she was telling Charles and Andrew that they needed to get divorced. Mr. Paxman adds, having been read the riot act by mummy, both Charles and Andrew were divorced within months. Sarah and Andrew would be the first to finalize their divorce in May 1996, with the Duchess of York reportedly receiving a lump sum settlement of £3 million and £15,000 a year. Diana and Charles would follow in August 1996, with the Princess of Wales receiving a lump sum settlement of £17 million and £400,000 a year. Both royal women lost the use of the title Her Royal Highness post-divorce, with Fergie now being known simply as Sarah, Duchess of York. However, the divorced Duke and Duchess of York continue to live together, and have even repeatedly jetted off on a romantic trip to Malaga. Fergie was spotted boarding a private jet earlier this week, although other reports suggest she and the Duke may be in the US. An insider told The Sun, the Duchess insisted she go on holiday with the Duke to look after him and show the world she stands by him. The Duke has been fairly relaxed up to now, he's starting to s himself. It's become the biggest story in the world and he's at the heart of the coverage. She feels this is like the old days when they would take on the world together. She knows she has to get him away from all the headlines.